This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Get together with the one, <laughs> the only toothless uh, <laughs> Stephen Kravitz. Are you st- taking care of? Hello, Stephen. Hello, Alex. Uh, are you taking care of that uh, that uh, tooth of yours? You know, it's funny. I got a remember last week we talked about Clear Choice. Oh, you you went to Clear Choice to get it. No, I, I didn't. I didn't go yet. I'm I'm going. Um, I'm going to see an oral surgeon on Friday. Oh, okay. And uh, one of your listeners, mm. or one of the viewers, I am me that said Clear Choice is a ripoff. Oh, really? Somebody who listened to our show, or your show. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. I've never, I've never, you know, heard of anybody that went to Clear Choice or whatever. But there's one part of it that gets me, is they say, yes, we can do it in less than one day. Well, wait a right. minute. Hold on a second. Your gums, you know, when you pull a tooth, it has to heal. Right. And then after it heals, they got to drill into the bone. Aye. And, Aye. No, no, don't, don't, it, it, you won't even notice it. They drill into your teeth. That's bone. Right. Okay. They drill into your bone and screw. I don't like that either. I don't like them drilling into my teeth. Listen, I'm going to have a thing done to my eyes in a couple of weeks where they're going to lift the lids and, right. and take care of the bottoms. Uh, I'll still have bags, but. And Left. that idea bothers me because I they don't even put, even put me out. They just pump me full of Valium and stuff, so I'm happy. Right. But you know they're gonna put they're gonna numb the eyelids and every and I'm going geez you know do I, and then and knock me out knock then, me then for, out then with for three days well they say they almost knock you out you know uh, like they didn't knock me out when they put the seeds in my prostate they did right. a, they did what was called a uh, spinal or whatever. Right, right. And they made me an epidermal. A, an ep, Well, no, it wasn't that. It was, a, but it was. I my I was dead from the waist down. Which, and that's different. How? Th- that's different. How exactly? I was going to make that joke before you got to it. Well, and, sorry. Anyway, and then uh, you feel like a paraplegic for about three hours. I have a, really? I have a friend who's a paraplegic, and I told him. I said, I now know what you go through every day. Right. You know. Uh, I mean, that idea that, hold on a second, my eyes are tearing. See, that's why I'm having the operation. Right. Uh, that uh, uh, that, that uh, I told him, I said, it, it just was amazing because you just feel nothing below your waist. You just, and you can't move your legs or anything. And it took about right. three, three hours for it to wear off. But in the meantime, they didn't put me out. Because they didn't want really? to, they didn't want to put me out because they said I'm too old to be put out. I went. I thought you could get to be too. You get to drink when you're 21. You know. Right. I mean? Right. 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 So I said, well, but you're not going to put me out. They said you won't know a thing. And what they did is they gave me like a heavy dose of Valium or something. Right. Which put me in this la la land that I didn't know what the fuck was happening. Right. But what I could hear, and this was a a, a wake up call for me is I could hear what they talk about in the OR. Oh, is that right? When they're operating on somebody like well, That's kind of weird. And and you know what they were talking about? So what, what? are you going to do this weekend? Oh, we're, we're going up to our cabin up in the country. Oh, that's nice. How's the wife and kids? Oh, they're fine. Right. And this guy's right, in, right. in there diddling with my prostate, right? So fine. So, but I didn't know what was going on. So that's probably right. what's going to happen here. I'm not going to. Time will just pfft, go like that, you know. But then afterwards, I got to put ice packs on my eyes every 15 minutes for two really for three days. For three days. Yeah, I guess to keep the bruising from getting too bad. I'll look like I I I won't be able to do a show that week. 
Okay. Right. The next week, I'll probably wear dark glasses through every show. Right, right. We talked about this last week. Yeah, it looks like somebody beat you up, you know. Right. In fact, somebody sent me a picture. She had it, and she sent me pictures of her operation. And right. And I went, oh, my God, I don't want to do that. You know, I mean, it really, it looks like I have an abusive wife or something, you know. Right, right, right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take Marjorie, walk down the street with her with my glasses off. And right. And have everybody stare at her. And every once in a while, I'll just turn to her and say, stop hitting me. Yeah. Well, did you ever have a girlfriend, for instance, who got something like a black eye you had nothing to do with, and then you walk down the street with them, and everybody gives no. you dirty looks? No, that never happened to me. Uh, that happened to you? It happened once, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, had, really? it had nothing to do with me. She bumped into a, a door or something, and she got this black eye. Right. And then we're walking down the street, and everybody's giving me dirty looks. Sure. You know, well, I'm sorry, I'm not a door. Go, go right. to have dirty looks to the door. Ridiculous. Well, people don't know. Yeah. People don't know. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so so uh, you're so you forgot about going to Clear Choice. Yeah, I don't know. You know, there a place that says we'll put it in plants for like nine hundred dollars or something like that. Right. Well. Let's ask the viewers. I mean, has anybody gone to Clear Choice? Okay. Well, you know, we'll uh, we'll wait for them to answer us. Uh, right. We record this ahead of time, right. so but there will be things that will come up on the uh, side panel here, the chat. So if anybody does this, knows, does this air every Wednesday? Yeah, I put it on on Wednesday. I put it day and date. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. So we can get really, you know, we can get topical and things like that. Right, 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 right. You know, we're not we're not going on and going. So, uh, how do you think the Civil War is going so far? <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. Custard, how do you feel about Little yeah, Big Horn? Yeah. It's just amazing to me that they can't give you like a clipper to put in there. Just 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 for cosmetic purposes. Right. Because you right. are you are an actor after all, and I right. know I know there are parts for people with no teeth, but you know I mean yeah, few and far between. Few and far between. And they're not usually big roles. What I'm thinking, you know, what I'm thinking of doing. I get the I got I signed up for this thing called the uh, uh, casting something or another, and they send these casting notices for extras. Right. Uh, and I have to then sign up for this thing in order to be able to get all the information. Right. But, but I was thinking of just trying it. What the hell? I, a lot of them for people who are like uh, over the, uh, you know, at age 80. Just you right, know, to right. be, be in a crowd or whatever. And right, I think it sure. pay, pays, pays union scale. It's about 200 bucks a day. Right. You know. But you treat it kind of like cattle. Are you really? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, you eat after the uh, principals eat. You don't get a trailer. You sit out in the rain sometimes. You sit on the curb. You wait around for hours and hours yeah. and hours. You, you know? They don't have an extras dressing room. Not on any <laughs> set that I've been on. No. I think that's hilarious. I mean, but I, I don't mind being treated like cattle. You know, I mean, I was, I'd, I've never done movies. I've never been in movies. Right. And... Um, it's what I set out to do when I went into radio. Really? Uh, radio was going to be the way to pay the bills, and then I figured if I did well enough in radio, they'd ask me to be in movies. Right. Well, <laughs> I never wound up in movies. No, but they did take some TV shows in San Francisco, and they shot movies in San Francisco. Yes, of I'm sure. Well, I'm wondering why you well, want that. I auditioned for a few, but right. I never got in. I never got them. You know. Uh, well, they have any? Do you have any acting chops? There's this woman, Nancy. What's her name in San Francisco's casting director? And uh, oh, I forget. Yeah, Nancy. I'm trying to remember her last name. And I, she used to, she liked me, so she used to call me in for stuff. I got called in for a Schwarzenegger film for a part. Oh, really? Yeah, but I, I just, I, I, I guess I'm just not that good an actor or whatever, you know, that or that I don't do it enough that I know how to do it. Or that, right. worst of all, I'm not very good at auditions, you know? Okay. You know, I, I often told people who wanted to audition me for a radio show, send us your audition tape. I said, the only audition I'm going to do for you is for you to hire me on for like a week while someone goes on vacation. And I said, right. you're going to hate me on Monday. You're going to think 
talked a little bit about it on Tuesday, and by Wednesday, you're going to want to hire me. Right. I said, but if I do an audition for you, you're not even going to want me. Right, right, you know? right. And, and so auditions really don't count. What counts is what you're going to do once you get there. You auditions know? are a screening process. You either fit the mold or you don't. You're like when you're at an audition, you're in the uh, waiting room, and you see 12 other people that look very similar to you. Yeah, well, I will always think of you as thug number three. Thank you so much. <laughs> I was crony number two. Was it crony number two? Yes, it was. Oh, Thank okay. you. Okay, so that's up from thug number three. <laughs> that's right. That's right. But I do get killed by Eastwood. Yeah, that, that's a great uh, claim to fame. Who, right. who was it? There was an actor who did a lot of movies where he killed people. And uh, after he'd do a scene with somebody and kill them, he'd give them a bouquet of flowers. Well, Eastwood came up to me and said, nice working with you, Stephen. Pleasure blowing you away. <laughs> did he say that? <laughs> yeah, he really did. Oh, uh, wow. wow. Right after my death scene. Yeah. Um, you said he was great to work with. Oh, he's the best. He was the best to work with. Yeah. You know, it was amazing. You know, he just had finished another movie, which is going to be on, uh, I think, HBO Max. Right. Uh, with him starring in it. At, right. Know, he's 92. Is that right? That's what I That's what I understand. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Echo, how old is Echo? How old is Clint Eastwood? Hmm? Clint Eastwood is 91 years old. 91 years old. 91. You were close. Yeah. 1930. Born on uh, May 31st, 1930. Really? Yeah. yeah what no. is Echo? I've that, heard of Alexa. That's Alexa. And I've heard of Cyrus. Well, I... I, I, I Got, it's an Alexa I'm talking to, but the, oh, actual, okay. the actual product is called. I have to can't I have to whisper Echo. Okay. All right. Uh, but the, but the people use the term Alexa in order to talk to it. But right. you have a choice. You can put in a choice of words, and one of them is Echo. Right. So what I did is I put in that rather than Alexa because my name is Alex. Right. And somebody might yell at me, Alex, and then all of a sudden Alexa will say, "What do you want?" Right, 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 so right. That, that's why we. And by the way, Marjorie has a friend named Echo. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yes. The How many she, name their kid Echo? Well, she's Chinese. I guess it's a common Chinese name. Echo. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how it's spelled. I I don't know if it's E C H O or whether it's E C C O or something like that. Right, 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 right. Or E C O or whatever. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Still, it's an odd name. But yes, I mean, it's kind of a nice name for a woman, don't you think? You think so? Yeah, I think it's a sweet name. Yeah. Echo. Yeah. Uh, hmm. I mean, it's better. How than, are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? It's, Echo. It's better than Dweezil or Moon Unit. It's certainly better than Moon Unit. Yeah. It's certainly better than Moon Unit. Yeah, and that was what Zappa named his kid. Right. But right. I, I think uh, she changed it just to Moon. Is that right? Yeah, but Dweezil Zappa kept the name Dweezil. Right, right. And we got used to it. We got used to it. We didn't mind the name. At first, it was kind of like, are you kidding? It's like, who's the who's the actress that named their kid Apple? Well, I think, you're, I think you are. Your life is somewhat figured out or dependent on uh, your ability to uh, live with the name you were given. I Who mean, named their kid Apple? I, I don't know. Um, you don't remember? It's some actress. Oh, Apple, Apple, Apple. Yeah, I, I think it was like, yeah, it's a mo pretty modern actress too, the current actress. Was it like Gwyneth the, Paltrow? I think it was or? Gwyneth Paltrow named your kid Apple. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Now that's a stupid name. Well, no, I think they would have done better to go with the name iPhone, but they did. <laughs> Good night. Well, no, but I grew up with the name Schwarzman, and right. and, and that kind of dictated my life a little bit because I spent my whole life having to tell people, "Hey, no T, two N's." Right. You know, because they'd always. That's like I got I got a friend whose name is Silberberg, not Silverberg. No V's, two B's. Silberberg. And every time he's got probably 
spell it out for right. people. Right, right, right. It's Silberberg. I can't even pronounce it. Silberberg. Silberberg. <laughs> Silberberg. He's got uh, three books out right now. Really? Yeah. So the kids' a... books. Kids' books. Oh, okay. But anyway, so it was Schwarzman. It was a, I, I had a few little pop problems about that, and then uh, when I was a kid, I had a nickname for my for my parents nicknamed me Bolo. Because, Bolo. Yes. Well, here's the reason why. You okay, know, let's you, hear this. You know, in the Jewish religion, right? Because you're Jewish. Sure. That you name your child after a dead relative. Right, and you only you, you use the first initial. Is it you just use the first initial? That's right, I named that to my great grandfather Samuel. Oh, okay. I didn't know it was the first. I thought it was actually the name. No. But anyway, it, it can be. It can be. It can be. At that time, the only really dead relative that was significant to my father was his brother, who died at twenty-one, and really? his, his name was Boleslav. Oh my goodness! Well, that's an aim. Well, yeah. But if you shortened it here in America, you would shorten it to Bolo. Okay. So uh, they didn't want to name saddle me with the name Bolo. They felt it was just too European. Right. Okay? So they gave me a very anglicized name, Bennett. Right. Gordon Schwarzman. Gordon was a family name. Where did Alex come from? Well, that goes a long way into my story. We haven't gotten there yet. All right. So, All right. so my parents always called me Bolo, and until I was like eight, I didn't know my my name was really Bennett. Really. And then I wanted to be called Ben. But I don't. Oh, even, really? Yeah, but I don't even like being called Ben. I like being called Bennett. If you're going to call me by my for real first right. name, right? Certainly, you're not a Benny. But at that time, I called myself Ben, and so I stopped with the Bolo because it was like when my parents say Bolo, I go, "That's not my parents." So, you know. I right. Yeah. Right. 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 So, um, but I. Um, so you were never a Benny. No, I was never a Benny. No. No. That's so, like I. There's only two people that call me Stevie. Yeah. So, Will and Debbie Durst. Really? Right. Oh, God. Well, they're the only ones. They're the only ones allowed to. Uh, oh, okay, Stevie. Anyway. Yeah, uh, easy, uh, easy. Uh, there, <laughs> I uh, so so what happened was is then I I I was using the name in radio because everybody has to take a stage name and you're not going to use Schwarzman in those days. Right. Today you might because there's a Schwarzenegger, right? Right. But anyway, uh, so I, I figured I would take my first name, Bennett, right. and make it my last name because that's a good okay. last name. Right. And then I called myself Jerry Bennett because I like Jerry Lewis. Oh, really? Yeah. So I was Jerry. There's a confession. I was Jerry Bennett until I got into the military. And then after the military, I got out and uh, they said, uh, oh, and then I kept using Jerry Bennett. And then I went to Houston, Texas, and I became James Bond. Let's not even get into that. <laughs> I didn't pick. I didn't pick it. The station did. That's what the station was doing. They wanted a morning man named James Bond. So, right. Okay. So then they gave me a nighttime talk show, and I had to change my name. And I figured, what am I going to go back to, Jerry Bennett? And I got to a point where you know, I, I that name did not appeal to me. Right. I wanted something really different. And my father had just died. Okay. And his name was Alex. Oh, is that right? Yes. Oh, is that right? So to honor your father, you chose Alex Bennett. Yeah. So my name, my show business name, is a little bit of both of my, is right. part of my life, you know. So it, You're it's, a mensch. Yeah, it's my father's first name and my, my first name together. Right. So that's how that came about. Wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know you were in the military. What branch were you in? I was in His Majesty's Navy. You were in the Navy? Mm -hmm. For how long? Two, two years? Two years, because I was in the Navy Reserve. And in oh, those okay. days, with Army Reserve, you went in for six months and they had to keep going to meetings. With right. the Navy Reserve, you went in for two years. Right. And then when you got out, you didn't have to go to meetings or anything. Oh, okay. So I figured, you know, do the two years and get it over with. So right, I, right. Yeah, so it was really rough service, too. It really was. It was terrible. Yeah, I can tell. 
saw a lot of action, did you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tell me where I finally wound up. Where'd you wind up? At the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service in Hollywood. Did you really? <laughs> yes. Oh, good for you. What I That's did. Like my, dad. my dad was in the Air Force and he joined the band. Well, what happened was when I went, when I knew I was going to the Navy, I started writing letters like crazy to like uh, the Navy Department or whatever, saying, you really should put me uh, in some kind of radio position because I've been a broadcaster for years and blah, 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 blah. And I kept writing them, kept writing them. Right. And then I got uh, uh, brought into the Navy and they put me on a ship, the USS Topeka. Is that right? Yeah, and I, so I ran their PR department, uh, in their, which really amounted to just writing parents and saying, your son is really doing a good job here in the Navy. Right, yeah. right, right, right. And one day they say, Bennett, uh, Schwarzman rather, uh, please report to blah, 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 and I go somewhere and they say, do you know anybody in, in, at the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service? And I said, no. He said, well, you're being assigned there. Oh, good for you. And apparently, the Navy had the uh, the Navy PR people. I can't remember where I wrote exactly, but they had the power to uh, to oversee and override anything the Navy might say and say, we want this guy, go get him. Right. And so right. They, they said, uh, you know, we want him for the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. So for the next uh, year and a half, I served my time by doing radio uh, 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 at um, on McCadden Street in Hollywood, right uh, in this big building called the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Really? Yeah, a broadcasting newscast to the world. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. Wow, aren't you special? It was terrific. Yeah. Uh, the only problem with it was is that at that time, if you um, uh, uh, did it. Um, uh, we're at the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Back in China, they were making a list of the names of everybody who did newscasts out of the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. And then they made, they they charged us with being spies or being propagandists. Is that right? Yeah. And oh, that's year, cool. Years later, I went to China and they never arrested me for it. But, you know. Right. Uh, they supposedly, I was on a, uh, this guy is wanted as a, uh, as a propagandist because anybody who was on the air, and all, we, all I was doing was the news. Right. You know, so. Well, that's propaganda when you're the enemy. I guess. I guess. You know? Do I look like a propagandist to you? No. Yeah. Now, let me ask you, do, do you qualify for VA benefits? Yes. Oh, so you're, you're, you're... I've never gone for them, but I we checked into it, and there are certain VA benefits. If I want to buy a home, I still have a VA loan I can get. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, a couple other things. I know Marjorie sent away and got all the stuff. She got my discharge papers, and then she applied, and they sent her all the benefits and stuff. But I've never, I've never used any of them. Right. You know. I mean, maybe I will someday. Who knows? Right, I'm right. You should here. consider it. Go, go, probably wind up in a veteran's hospital or something. Well, you know what? It won't cost you a dime. Well, I guess not. I mean, uh, but uh, I haven't really checked into it. I didn't think much of it, all right? Right, so, right, right, uh, right. And I've never been one who's that, that goes out of my way to get free stuff. I, I don't know why, but, right. you know, I know people that do, they'll, you know, go crazy sure. just to get something for free. But, right. you know, I, I don't. Right. So, but, so anyway, we've, uh, we, so we're going to, we're going to, when are you going to find out about your tooth? Yes. Uh, on uh, Friday. On Friday. Okay. So the next time we talk, we'll know. Right. Well, the, we'll know more. Well, you're going to an oral surgeon. He's going to tell you, right. he's going to tell you $5,000. I bet you. But, who knows? You know. Right. Who knows? Uh, we, if that happens, we can probably find a way to get it taken care of cheaper. I'm sure. Right, 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 right. Now, do you have do you have you have insurance, right? I have Medicare and Mass Health. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you were able to get SAG AFTRA, but you can't get it, so neither can I. By no. The, by the way, Ed Asner's suit went to a judge the other day. They wanted this, SAG AFTRA wanted it dismissed, 
And, right. And the judge said, no way. What was the suit? The suit is to restore the benefits we had because they say by doing away with them, they were discriminatory, discriminatory to, towards old people. Ageism. And, yeah, and in spite of the fact that uh, Asner is now dead, uh, his name will still be on the suit. So right, right, good. right, right, right. Good. He was a terrific guy. He was a fighter. He was a right. scrappy guy. Huh. You know, tr <laughs> a troublemaker, good troublemaker. Anyway, right. Hey, listen, uh, we've run out of time here. You know, Are you kidding me? I give you twenty five minutes, and before I know it, we're there. Right. You know. See you next week. See you next week, same time. L ladies and gentlemen, that is Stephen Kravitz. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, folks. Bye bye. Bye bye. This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, okay, thank you very much. Uh, there was Stephen Kravitz, and here I am. How are you? Good evening. I'm Alex Bennett, and we're here until uh, till midnight tonight. And is anybody waiting to be on the uh, show? No, there's nobody waiting to be on the show. Oh, well, wait a minute. Somebody just came on here. William Ferguson. Okay, well, we'll, we'll bring William in here and admit him. Uh, but uh, he's the one person uh, we, we got here. I haven't got your picture on yet, William. Hold on a second. Let me just uh, let me just do this a little bit, and we should be okay. Let me see here. There we are. Hello, William. How are you? Hi, Alex. You know, uh, nobody's calling. Nobody's calling. Yeah, usually, what? you know, when I start off the show. Usually uh -huh. there were like four or five people ready to go, you know, and then others joined, and uh, that's not the case tonight. All mm. of a sudden we're we're not uh, we're not. Uh... Oh, here here comes. Uh, let's see here. Well, Jeff Stein. Yay, hey, Jeff. Yeah, right. I love having Jeff on. The only problem with Jeff is is that he doesn't say much. <laughs> and first he's. Got... I'll say a little bit today. You'll say a little bit today. Well, yeah. there's nobody else to compete against except William. And mm. you know, oh. He, he, he'll give I guess you a, i got to work hard. You I'll go on hard. for days. Yeah, this, it's a big, 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 uh, big, uh, all the pressure's on you. You know, I, 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 you, you know I, I begin to wonder, I, you know, I, I've said this before and I gripe about this, and, uh, but I wonder why I even do this, if, if this is the kind of reaction we're getting now. Now, next week, I'm not even going to be on most days next week. I'm not going to be on except for, I think, Friday we'll be able to be on, we'll be able to do a show, because I've got this court thing going on. Court? Yeah, and uh, I go to court. Yeah, it's that murder trial against me. And, uh, oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I thought it was the stagecoach robbery. And, but, and uh, you know, we won't be here next week for at least, I mean, I, I, I will do the Monday show. But the trial uh, is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Then they say the following week it might be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I'm thinking to myself, this is just about an apartment. You know, there are murder trials that have gone for less time than this thing. You know, and every minute that this judge keeps having another day that we're going to be there, it's another day that, uh, that i got to be paying a lawyer. And, you know, when they bill out at like almost $500 an hour, it's not cheap. No. Okay. And it's just, it's just, it's, it's horrible. So I are you, are you involved in this or are you on the jury? No, I'm involved in this. this oh, is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, what? I mean, I'm on a jury. I'm paying lawyers. No, <laughs> you know, when you're on a jury, you don't have to pay a lawyer. You know. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Well, I think the judge likes you. Hmm? Does the judge like you? No. No. Uh, they, they already have an attitude about us. Pre preconceived attitude. You know, Good. so. Oh, was, well. Yeah. Speedy trial, hey. Huh? Fair and bad. Fair trial. Yeah. Yeah. Hardly. I mean, I just, I find, it's just, you know, the judge goes, let's have another uh, conference uh, to see if we can settle this thing. Oh, great. Get all the lawyers in a room. You know, the only people that come out ahead in this deal are the lawyers. Yeah. 
You know, and they go, oh, we're going to spend four hours in, in a conference before the actual trial? Oh, goody, goody, goody. That's another, let's say, that's $2,000. And I just make that by coming into this courtroom. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I should, and I should now, have been a lawyer. Now, wait a minute. On top of that, there are three sets of lawyers in this case. Okay? Mm-hmm. So, because there are three parties involved. So, three times, oh, two thousand, six thousand dollars being made in that courtroom that day. Should have been a lawyer. Yeah, it should have been a lawyer. Yeah. yeah me exactly. too. Exactly. <laughs> nice work if you can get it. Yeah, very nice work. But, you know. I got a lawyer. You have a lawyer? Yeah. You know, everybody's got a lawyer. I mean, I've got this lawyer. I, I, um. Oh, I, you know my wife's a lawyer. I know your wife's a lawyer. Yeah. Yeah, but she couldn't. She couldn't handle this kind of case. I don't think she wanted to. <laughs> I don't think she'd want to. No, no. What kind of law does she do? Well, she used to do a lot of the environmental stuff. Oh, okay. And, uh, but right now she's, she's retired at this point. Mm -hmm. But uh, she does a lot of little things for her friends for help. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. She she's very knowledgeable. Yeah. So she's anyway, good. so if if other people try to call now, shall I let them on or shall I not let them on? Oh, let them on. You know, I mean, I I just uh, you know, where are the where are the usual suspects? Where's Alan tonight? You know. Yeah. I mean, uh, he's usually there at the very beginning. I need people at the very beginning. I don't need them later on. You know. Uh, well, the last couple of weeks, it's like I wanted to come on, but you you weren't having a show, and the times I couldn't come on because I had some hot coding projects for school that I had to do. It's mm -hmm. like I couldn't. You were doing your show. Well, no, I was. I've been doing my show every night except for I, I've stopped doing Tuesdays, and you know I begin to wonder why I should be doing Thursdays right now. Not that mm -hmm. you guys, I don't appreciate you guys calling, but I, I just wonder why I should even be doing it. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, I do the show on Monday. What we get got thirteen people the other day, almost immediately. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So I mean, uh, why do I keep doing this thing at night? Is what I be, I'm beginning to wonder. But then again, if I do the thing, if I were to do a four o'clock show, oh, say two or three days a week, it wouldn't make that Monday one as special as it is. So that's the other problem. So I don't know. I don't know what yeah. to do. Plus, when you at this time, you get all the California people who are available. Let's say, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, and and a lot of the East Coast people too. Where are you, William? You're, I'm in California. You're in California. Yeah, so yeah. it's early there for you. you know? Yeah, eight oh seven. Yeah, eight oh seven. You know, and um, uh, but we'll we'll do this for a couple more minutes, and if nobody's calling, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna call it quits. Anything you want to talk about, William? Something that uh, has been in the news or something that's been bothering you? Bothering me? Well, it doesn't have God. to be in the news either. It could just be something that's bothering you. Where do I start? <laughs> mm. Well, I hear Facebook is changing their name. Yes, they're going to be called Meta. Yeah, it's like it smacks of Philip Morris. Oh, really? Well, uh, yeah, because they changed their name to Altria, but they're still selling oh. the products that kill half a million people a year. Well, people don't realize this. A lot of companies aren't using the names you think they use, like uh, uh, Google. You think is Google, right? It's Alphabet, but it's the company is Alphabet. Mm -hmm. Where they came up with Alphabet, I have no idea. I mean, it, it doesn't mean anything, does it? Yeah, I think it does. Alphabet? Yeah. I think that has a description. Yeah. And of saying something with the letter A. Now, this is Matt Duckworth is supposedly calling, but I have no idea. This may be a phony call, so let's see what, what it is. Uh -huh. Let's, Let's see, see here. It could be oh. somebody that we already know and is using another name. Matt, are you there? Matt, are you there? See, I don't get any. Oh, oh there he is. There's Matt. Hello, Matt. How are you? Give us a little audio. 
Does he have his audio Put on? Put your volume on. Yeah, he does have his audio on. Can you hear us, Matt? Matt, can you hear us? Sometimes the first time somebody, I don't, I don't think Matt's ever called before. Has he or has he? Not oh, there he goes. He's connecting. He's connecting his audio. Hello, you there, Matt? Wait a minute. Matt? Uh, Matt? Matt? Can you hear us, Matt? <laughs> there he goes. He's dis Now he's back on again. This is <laughs> all you got to do is let me see here. Is Matt? Is Matt? Matt's got his audio on. Can you hear us, Matt? Nod your head, Matt. Let's see here. Um, make co-host now. Stop uh, now. Let's see here. Let's see here. That's I can mute him, but uh, he's he's supposedly he's got his audio, but he can't hear us. Boy, this makes for some great broadcasting, doesn't it? It's be gripping. Yeah. <laughs> well, while he's he's trying to get in there, uh, um, 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 uh, there are places you can just call us folks you can just go over to gabnet.net and over on the right hand side of the page it says here click here to zoom and you'll immediately be put on with us can you hear, can you hear us me? matt yes matt we just heard yeah you. yeah what, sorry what, my, what was uh, your problem matt stupid controls uh, it doesn't it's not clear on the, how to turn the audio on it's stupid now, you've been on before <laughs> right matt? and I, i'm supposed to be an it professional and i can't figure it out okay where are you calling from matt <laughs> Seattle. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You're the guy from Seattle, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And whenever I hear you have a low low audience, I, I make sure to call because I don't want you to stop. Oh well, good. Uh, <laughs> you, you, uh, but uh, uh, Matt Duckworth. But I don't remember you. Did you use the name Duckworth last time, or just use Matt or something? I think I added my last name because I was using it for work. And oh, so, I see. Um, okay. So it changed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. what kind of IT stuff uh, do you do? <clears throat> Uh, I'm working from home now, and I I just uh, it's, I support this company that that um, it's do, it's like document management stuff for uh, for some uh, attorney attorneys and uh, 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 medical field uh, litigation stuff. Yeah, how do you yeah. uh, how do you so, like working from home now? <clears throat> uh, you know, I have mixed feelings about it. Uh, it's kind of nice. You know, you don't have to make a lunch. You don't have to shower half the time. You don't have to wear, you don't have to wear <laughs> underpants. You barely have to. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> where are the, what are these pants you speak of? <laughs> <laughs> but I do kind of miss some of the interaction and stuff, you know. Yeah, but I, I, you know, I, 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 of course, I wasn't in the middle of all this because I was way out of work before this. But I wondered what would I do if I had to do my show every night, every day from home for like Sirius XM, and I liked getting up and going in and going up an elevator into a yeah. studio environment you know and then oh, walking yeah. into the studio and there was my producer and there was you know other people and yeah and um i just don't know if i if i would be that happy working from home you know yeah there's something to it especially like meetings and stuff it's, it's a lot more productive if you can see everybody <clears throat> You know, unlike you know, you don't want to be in the, in the Zuckerberg uh, uh, metaverse meetings. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what happened? Um, uh, who was a, who was the writer? I, they, I saw an interview with a writer once, and they asked him, "How do you how do you write? Because you obviously you write at home." And he had this big sprawling ranch or whatever. And he said he actually has a cabin that he had built, and every day he goes to this cabin for eight hours, except he takes an hour off for lunch. <clears throat> and he goes in there, and no matter what, he forces himself to write. Mm. He said, unless I do it that way, mm. I'm never gonna write anything, <clears throat> you know? And I've heard yeah. of other people doing exactly that same thing, you know? Um, uh, I, I, you know, I, I question how productive people are at home. Although they maybe they are more productive than than we than we would like to think, uh, but I uh, think I think I'm more productive because sometimes you can you know maybe you need to take two or three hours off to go run some errands and then just work later into the night and mm -hmm. you know there's so much more flexibility yeah if, if the job allows it you know yeah yeah are you the only one at, at home yeah yeah I got to place it myself yeah yeah. <laughs> 
I've been applying for other jobs because I don't have uh, benefits at this job, <clears throat> but I've I've decided today I'm just giving up on trying. It, it's too much. It's too much rejection. I'm so tired of it. I've been trying for a year to get a job with benefits, and the whole job market application process is kind of a joke. Is finding jobs with benefits these days difficult? Uh, well, because for me, you, it has been. Because you mean, would be, you would this, think these companies were throwing out benefits like crazy because they can't get anybody yeah. to go to work for them. Yeah, I mean, most of the places that I am applying at have benefits, but the the only one that I've been able to land is I got this job like three months ago now. Yeah. Um, and it's fine, but they don't have uh, medical. I, I have medical from Cobra from when I got laid off, but that expires in December. Mm -hmm. So, but I. The whole process of applying is just ridiculous. You know, you, you throw your resume into this black hole online and you just pray to God they reply to you and it's <laughs> stupid. I, I don't know anything about that, no. <laughs> it's it's kind of a joke. Yeah, it is. How about you? I think it, Will, go ahead. William, you have the same kind of situation? Oh, no, I have a job. It just... But yeah, I mean, I threw out my, in the beginning, I threw out my resume and it was like, they would get back to me like months later and it was like, did I apply for this place? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Do, who are you again? God, I don't right. even know how you'd find a radio job today. There aren't any, I don't think. There aren't any. What? And it's all push button. You, you know, you do a podcast, but how many podcasts are there out there? A lot. A, a lot? Thousands. You want to know how many? Uh, they, I think I saw a number like four million. <laughs> four million. This is one podcast out of four million. Yeah, That's I'm crazy. lucky anybody's calling. You know, I mean, it's it's amazing uh, how how much work this. You know, how many people are doing podcasts, and I'm thinking to myself, man, that's really cheap in my business. Mm. <laughs> you know, I had a question for you, Alex, about that. This GabNet, I, mm -hmm. I, I've been listening to you for a couple of years now. And mm -hmm. is there anything really behind GabNet itself, or is, it, is that just a name on, on a site? Is there something else behind that that I'm not aware of? Yeah, we're really known as Meta, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. What do you mean? Is there, is there anything else but, but, but behind it? You mean anybody backing it or something? No, I mean, are there other? I know there's the other show with uh, Jack. Mm -hmm. um, but is there a is there a, is there like other other uh, do you own it? Is it is it an actual corporation kind of a thing? You're looking at the CEO, <laughs> right? You just one day thought I'm going to call a Gabnet and I'm going to make a site, and that was the that was. Well, no, what happened? History. What happened was I got I got fired from um, uh, from Sirius XM, and uh, we wanted to put something on the air the following Monday, and I had a friend who had a TV studio. So we actually did this as a TV show to begin with, you know, out of a studio, uh, and it looked oh, okay. it looked gorgeous. It really was terrific. Uh, but it was uh, we did that, and then um, we, we we then went and started doing it as audio because the the studio that we were doing it from went out of business, and so I just started doing it not like this but actually just as an audio only show and uh, we had towards the end of my time at Sirius XM started referring to the show I was doing as the Great American Broadcast uh, because there was a song out of a 1930s movie uh, called the Great American Broadcast and so we used that as the theme song and everything and uh, when we started doing it here online um, my my producer uh, Albert said to me, "Gee, Great American Broadcast, it's GabNet, you know, the Great American Broadcast Network." Mm -hmm. So we just started calling it GabNet. That's how the name came about. Mm -hmm. And that's it funny to... because Phil Meyer claims that he coined the term. No, he didn't. He's... <laughs> <laughs> no, he did not. It was it okay. was actually it was Albert. Yeah. Now, there you go. We came up with a gap. How long did Albert work with you? Well, he he worked with me at Sirius XM for yeah, almost for nine a, years, I yeah. think. Yeah. But I, I mean, at your office, so to speak. What do you mean? In this thing? 
Uh, in Gabnet, yeah. Gabnet, he was with me for the first six months when we were doing the TV thing, and he was doing the switching and everything like that. Right. And then he came and did a show here for a while. That's right. When we were doing just the audio, yeah. yeah. In fact, if you have Roku, go on, use your Roku and go on to Gabnet. There's a Gabnet channel, uh, and mm -hmm. there you will find what we call the, uh, I guess I call it the archives or something like that, and all the old shows are mm -hmm. there and you can hear uh albert's show up there you can also hear jim's show uh you can hear Mir miranda janelle mm. uh, uh, who was with us I, I don't know how many of you remember this now you know I, most of this i don't remember everybody's name right i'm alan yeah but we have miranda <laughs> janelle and she did a show every every night or every uh, about t three nights a week, two nights a week, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Jim Browning, Rebel Stoke Jim, did a show three nights yeah. a week, and and, and uh, so we had quite a few people doing it. And we also had a sex show on here for a while. Really? Uh, the what? Were doing a, a <laughs> sex show. Uh huh. <laughs> well, this guy uh -huh. came to me and he said we're doing a show, but they were doing it for they were doing it for broadcast. So it couldn't be too filthy, right? You know, the Q and A, a Q and A type show about sex. Uh, I, I can't even explain what it was. You know, <laughs> I should put one on over the weekends. I should put a, one of one of the episodes of it on so people could hear what it was. But uh, you know, I didn't. You know, it didn't. Uh, uh, it didn't last very long. It lasted. You, you about didn't a year. watch. Sort of sex on YouTube now. They got a, a friend of mine looks for the weird and odd stuff on YouTube. Sent me a link of a guy and a girl kissing and her getting down, eating her out. It didn't show his tongue in there, but you could see what looked like it. It showed two gay guys having sex with another gay guy. Almost in the nude, you didn't see any genitals. I don't know. I watch YouTube every uh, t uh, two, two, three hours a day, and I've never run anything that comes even it, close to that. And then, I have then, never seen anything. Yesterday, like that I think I brought this up on Jack's show, but yesterday she said, I can't believe this. Th th there's somebody completely nude demonstrating on his own dick how to put a condom on. And I looked at it and I go, well, this is not pretty, but you know, I can't believe that YouTube's allowing this. Well, that's educational. That's that's what Jack yeah. said. He said that, but you know, it's got you got some like twenty-two year old sounds like German boy, who's you know a a, a bodybuilder or something, and he he's erect and he's nude and he's putting his condom on talking. And I, I've never seen anything like that on YouTube, I, and I, I don't I, think I don't think it would ever exist. Okay. You want me to send it to you? Uh, send me the. Is it a YouTube link? Yes. Yes. Okay. Send me the YouTube link, and I will look at it. I still it have here. the email that she sent me. I'll send you the link. I just I can't believe that it's on YouTube. Hmm. That should be a new show called "I Can't Believe It's on YouTube." <laughs> yeah. There we go. Not. So I'm not going to play it now. I'm just going to find it and. Uh, just send me the link. Just send I will. me the link. I will. Yeah. I will. It's just, uh, it's. Everybody out there is listening, going, Will you share that with us? Will you share yeah, that really. with They're us? Yeah, really. They're like, Go find it, Alan. Go find it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Show us, Alan. Show us. How do I get this out of the. Oh, there we go. Today oh, we are I'm going already... to put on the condom. I'm already signed in. Yeah. Yeah, just, um, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. get the email. Okay. Yeah. Do All right, I set. got the link. I'm c copying the link. And you're putting it on my Facebook page, right? You're sending me as a Facebook message? Is that what you want it on? Yeah, yeah, do it as a Facebook message. That's, that's fine. That's easy for me. <clears throat> Let me see here. Uh, Alex, is this what you call good radio? Huh? <laughs> now, this what you, you call know, good the radio? Numbers, the numbers are going up now. People want to see this. <laughs> well, no, I won't. don't know if Facebook would allow this, but the link... You can mm -hmm. get the link on Facebook. Hold on a minute, Alex Bennett. Yeah, it just it just you do to send uh, you a message. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I should be getting it here. I've got Messenger here. Okay, uh, it's on Messenger. It's sent. 
There it is, cigar dude. There it is. You hear? Rang my my watch. And so it shows a picture right now below yeah. it of a, a bodybuilder type guy with his bathing suit on, and it says how to wear a condom for a man. No, well, wait a minute. Yeah. Let me let me show everybody here that that. Actually... I mean, this part is obviously can be shown. Yeah, there it is. See right here, folks. Are we about uh, to get zucked? We're going to get zucked here, aren't we? No, 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 you no, won't, no, you won't. no because this is on YouTube. I'm not going to show it, however, right. because I don't no. know. I don't know what it's going to be, but uh, uh, let me let me just watch it for a second and see what it looks like. It, yeah, it's a minute and a half long. It's, it's a minute simple. and a half, and the guy is now waving, and he's got a condom, and he says, uh, "How to wear a condom for a man." Well, how do you wear a condom for a woman? <laughs> Wait a minute. His penis is out, and it is erect, and he is... Okay, if if YouTube doesn't let this on, this show on right now that we're doing, because we're discussing this, then I want to know why I can go on YouTube and get this. Yeah, he's actually he's putting a... He's putting yeah, that's, a that's educational. I mean, he's, you know, he's got... You know, he's like 22, 25. He's got no body hair. He obviously shaves his hair or whatever. Yeah. I don't know what guys do, but, you know, but, uh, you know, he's got a, a this big ass dick and he's putting it on and, you know, his balls are, I mean, it's just, he's in the nude. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. how the yeah. hell? Well, there it is. It, it is. You are right. You know, I yeah. find that very hard I've, to believe. I've seen videos, you know, with women giving birth on YouTube. I mean, it's just. Mm -hmm. Got happy human coming out. Of well, so a, a link to this picture, away from this picture, mm -hmm. there's it, it, it lists on the site of YouTube things that are closely related that you might want to see. Yeah, I got to watch actual surgery. It's on there of how a penile implant is installed. I, a lot of cutting and a lot of blood, and I'm like, if it doesn't work, I'm done with it. I am not getting one of these penile implants. Well, I saw it this like it would be video, really man. painful the surgery. Why well, I wouldn't want one of those penal implants. Yeah. But that, when it stops working, it's done. Who cares? Yeah. What, what were you going to say, uh, Mr. Ferguson? Oh no, I was raising my hand. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm like, you know, okay, if it if it decides, I mean, I'm 62, almost 63, and it still works, and so no pills needed, but. That could change. Well, anything. I'm, 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 80, I'm 81, and it takes a lot of coaxing. <laughs> well, I also had the prostate thing and all of that, right, you right. know. I haven't had that yet. But, but and I could feel bad about that, but I had so many fun years with it. Yeah, it sounds like you fucked just about everybody well, everywhere no, you went. Well, I didn't get around to you. But anyway, uh, <laughs> female, uh, female. No, but but I, you know, I uh, found that I. To be honest with you, that I uh, was very, uh, very happy with uh, how the use I got out of it, and if I'm not getting a lot of use out of it now, so be it. You know, I mean, it come works on. as a, a great thing to empty your bladder. Uh, well, you know, every sometimes, day. huh? Sometimes, <laughs> it's like the line out of my favorite year when uh, uh, Selma Diamond walks into the men's room and there's Peter O'Toole taking a leak. And she says, this is for women. He says, so is this, man, but occasionally I have to run water through it. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, Matt, uh, how you, are you happy where you moved to? You were where? You were down in the southwest somewhere, weren't you? I was down in Houston. Yep. Yeah, and, um, yeah, I like it here. I mean, it's it's cold, but, you know, it's it's cold just about everywhere. So I, don't, I can't really hold that against it. I, uh, is it a nice uh variety of people yeah um i've gotten out here and there and um there's yeah people are really nice here and there's uh, there's some really good restaurants and um it's mm. it's confusing it's there's there's a lot of a lot of nooks and crannies all over the place the parts of the city that, that to explore it's 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 there's a lot to see so I was, in seattle, the surface. I was in seattle one day and i think the sun came out for about 11 minutes on a wednesday <laughs> <laughs> The yeah, first I three months for two years. I was in Se Seattle once, and it stopped raining for about eleven minutes. Yeah, that too. Well, we'll see. I think it's to be changed a little bit because the first three months I was here, it didn't rain hardly at all. Yeah. Thank so, you, Donald Trump, for screwing up the uh, 
environment. Well, you're not getting slammed by that type of, that bomb typhoon that we had. Uh, it's raining, but it's it. Because well, I was living, it rains, living in Texas, the, the storm. Wait, 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 let let, uh, let Well, the, the storms in Texas are so horrendous that to me this is nothing. So it doesn't really bother me. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I know you were talking about you were in Houston. Uh, you were talking about that last night, Alex, and um, that was one of the things I really hated about there. It floods there so easily that it's just horrendous. You know, I don't remember it flooding. I just remember really? the humidity as being unrelenting. Yeah. You know, well, it's like right next to the Gulf of Mexico, right? But I mean, yeah, humid, right humid ten months out of the year. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. As I used to joke, it's very hard to keep a crease in your pants in Houston, Texas. All right, let me cross that off my list of places that I might want to go visit. Actually, I, yeah. Houston was one of my favorite cities of all the cities that I lived in. Really? really? Oh, yeah. That surprises me so much to hear you say that. Well, <laughs> this this was back, you know, this was back in the day. And yeah, yeah it's probably much different. You had these, uh, what I loved about Texas were the beer lounges. They were fun. You'd go <laughs> in, there'd be Buck Owens on the jukebox, and they'd be serving Jack's <laughs> beer. You know, or pearl beer, and uh, and I wasn't a beer drinker, but I loved it. I loved just the whole the whole environment. I thought Houston in those days was a lot of fun. <laughs> were you near down, downtown, or what part of Houston were you? Uh, I lived uh, no, I lived out um, uh, near Buffalo Bayou. You know where Buffalo <clears throat> Bayou was? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I had an apartment. There was a big apartment house complex there, and I lived there. Nice story. That's a nice story. Yeah. And then we were down in uh, this radio station was on Lovett. Boulevard or Bo Lovett Street was it, and that later on I was told that became the gay section of town, you know. Uh, but uh, I, I I loved it, you know. I've never been bothered by gay people. I mean, I, I I had a girlfriend for years that lived in the middle of the Castro, and so if I was bothered, I would have never visited her. Well, I was never bothered by gay people because I went into show business and I went into theater. In the beginning. Oh, you can't swing a dead cat in show business in theater without hitting a gay person. Yeah, I mean, but I was going, I, I started out by being an actor. Yeah. And so I did a lot of theater, and my, you know, my, all the people I work with were gay, right? You know. Mm -hmm. What was oh, that? Oh, you think I'm going to trust my hair to a straight guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not that hairstyle, William. Uh, well, I trust my hair. You, I, at least you I, got I, enough hair to, uh, you know. I trust my hair to my wife. There you go. Yeah. So, you know. You well, comb your hair with a wash rag, yeah. right, Alex? What? You comb your hair with a wash rag. Yeah, that's the old joke. You know. yeah, I remember you were on that minoxidil kick for a while. Well, that I tried that for a while. and uh, Did was, you ever get any results? I never saw any tangible results from that. I never saw any tangible results either. You know? I tried it. I got dry, uh, dry skin. And it made my head itch. And then I started taking, for <laughs> the prostate, I started taking minoxidil. And minoxidil is actually what uh, what uh, Rogaine is. Uh, right. It's the same thing. Only you rub Rogaine it. Rogaine is the it, name it's brand, right. It's a liquid form, and it's pour, you pour it on your head. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I, I, I used that for quite a while, and that didn't help. You know, but well, that's I, the same thing, though, right? Uh, it's basically it's the same thing. It's just, it just has another usage. Oh, okay. Uh, in the and case of finasteride, it's to shrink your prostate in oh. case for enlarged prostates. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and over several months, it shrinks it. It's nothing that it does overnight. There's, there's a there's a drug that shrinks your prostate that also grows hair called Propecia. 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 Well, no, Propecia is what finasteride was. Excuse me. That's what oh, finasteride okay. was. Okay, now I got it. Okay, yeah. good. That's what Trump. That's what Trump takes. I also had a maid named Propecia, so uh, that was. You know. Wow. <laughs> anyway, uh, so so uh, let me see here. What is, Alex is still watching the How to Put the Condom on. No, what's what's. <laughs> It's 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 just kind of humorous. I mean, I, you know, I, I, as soon as I sent the email to you, I'm gonna, you know, and I sent it to a couple other people. I'm gonna delete the email. It's of no interest to me. I don't use condoms, and besides, when I was a kid, I learned how. 
Well, I mean, not it, everybody does. It, well, I mean, every it, it, a lot of people use condoms because of the, uh, pre pre prevention of disease. I mean, it's sure. not why we wear Absolutely. masks for pregnancy disease. Yeah. Well, I, well I, if you're going to use it for pregnancy, it, it's not the most the best idea. Okay, you know, it helps, but you can still get somebody pregnant with a condom. They've been known to break, okay? Mm. Yes, yes, they have. <clears throat> Wait a minute, you want me to show you how to put it on? No, anyway. No, yeah. no. Mm. Yeah. That, that was pretty instructional. There's uh, other ones mm. on YouTube, too, but... Mm. No, what I, what I remember in Seattle was there's a great fish market there, isn't there? Oh, I'm watching this now. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Everybody in the it. audience, come on the show and, and Damn, watch. talk about tall timber. <laughs> when I was a kid, when I was a kid, wow. they, just used a, they used a banana and we liked it. Yeah, right. They showed you this how to is, do it. This is the one that's a uh, that, that's, uh, kid that talks over what he's doing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lord. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all all right. timber. I get it. Yeah, wow. And that one guy was not certain. Well, I'll have to show it to Marjorie, my wife, uh, because she always says to me, like when we're watching a TV show and there's suddenly there's nudity in the show, are we going to see penis? That's what she always says to me. Are we going to see penis? She'll, she'll love to see She'll that, love man. this. <laughs> she'll love this. I mean, yeah. It's a kid with, uh, you know, a big dick. I guess. That's I guess. Is that big? Maybe not compared to you. I'm sorry. Yeah, I've never I, seen yours. Don't care yeah. to. But it looks pretty big to me. I don't know. It seems like it's average size to me. I don't know. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, except for he has foreskin and you don't. Uh, I'll assume. Actually, okay. I, all right. I see the one. How to put on a condom for men. I'm looking at this right now. There's another, actually another YouTube video showing you how to put on a condom with all these 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 guys are hung like horses. I, mean, just... I think I think William's jealous. Yeah, I am. I think what okay. they. I wonder. I'm I wonder having if, an inferiority I, complex I wonder if, right I wonder now. If you I'm get, sorry. If you what, get what away else can with we talk this, about? Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I wonder if you can yeah, get really. away with this on YouTube, and that is teaching women how to put on a condom. Yes. Yes. Okay. And then the woman would have to put the condom on, and then we're getting really close. Okay, we're almost there. I always felt better when I, when I was with with a woman. It's like, you know, yeah, you want me to put on a condom? How about you put it on for me? Yeah, I was, yeah, I, you know. Anyway, let's, let's, anyway, anyway, anyway I think, I think, I, well, you know that that too. I think Matt would prefer we change the subject. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> oh, sorry, he's Matt. The only, hey. He's the only one on the show that could probably what? do it. But <laughs> need it, use it. I don't think I don't that's necessarily really true. Let's just on to another <laughs> subject. Leave it Not to you. Not very often I'm at a loss of words. <laughs> Leave it to you to bring up this subject. You know. I don't know. I just I thought it was really unusual for YouTube. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, in fact, you know what I'll do? What I'll do for the people who are in the chat room. Wait a minute. Where is it? Uh, here is the. <laughs> He here. clicks it on the link. Here. No, yeah, we're going to, uh, we'll do this. Okay. You know, first of all, let me get uh, Al. There we go. And then I get this. This is the, okay, that's the YouTube link. They can't get mad at me for putting up a YouTube link, right? They can't. Okay. And now I go to, uh, let's see here. Where is the, um, where is it? There we go. And now I will. Put on the. I bet it show probably shows the picture too. Let yeah, the picture. Here. But he's got he's got his swim trunks or okay, something. Okay, I just if you're if you're watching the show now, I just put the YouTube link up. It's on there for this. Yep. What what's there? It, it popped up. It says Alex Bennett, and it's it's got a YouTube video. Yeah, but it doesn't have the picture. <laughs> no, no. Good. Good. I'm, how, I'm, how gonna, many, I'm gonna touch many... the link and see what happens. How many views has this uh, this video had, Alan? Seven hundred eighteen thousand. You must oh, sign wow. in. You must sign in to see the video. <laughs> that's wow. not a, that's not a lot. You would think that would have a lot more than one hundred eighteen thousand. Well, I think that's yeah. about maybe three bucks monetized. What? 
<laughs> I think that's about maybe three dollars and twenty eight cents monetized. No, oh, I see with the commercial. But I want. Do they run a commercial beforehand on it? Uh, Let me see. No, no, it goes straight to the video. Yeah. So you're uh, saying that this this every time somebody watches this show on YouTube, this kid makes money or somebody? Yes. Makes money? Yes, he does. No. No, only if they're commercials. In other words, I make about two hundred bucks a year off of this. Hey guys. Okay. Uh, and and uh, but that's because I'm making money via 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 the commercials. Okay. Uh, you can you can only start running commercials once you have a thousand subscribers. Oh, okay. Okay. So, but well, he, this, hmm? this th he's only got um. Uh, 1.2 thousand people, but it only got on YouTube October what, 3rd. What does it say? One, one point what? Mm. 1.2K. I'm uh, sure for a thousand. Yeah, that's yeah a thousand. 1,200. 1. 1.2 thousand? Yeah, and wow. he's got 58 people that gave him a thumbs down. But, you know, it only got on there on... Why is this a big subject right now? Why are we even talking about you, you this? You posted it on YouTube. <laughs> well, I thought that would I don't just take how it came up. Up. Bored? That would, We're bored, perhaps? <laughs> that would keep everybody happy. Yeah. Okay. The reason hey, Alex, it's I, interesting I, I, what, what, is what because man, women, nobody hope, expects to see that. Right. Yeah, people aren't searching for it because they don't expect it to even be out there, right? Right, on, on yeah. the internet. And my numbers of people watching me is probably going to go down now because they're all going to be watching this guy jerk off or put on his well, condom. When I first started, we were at 30, and now we're at 35. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Boy. We're, so what, we got, we're, we're, maybe we're, we should all whip our dicks out. We're cooking no, I now. Think, I think, let, let me look for one that's got a, a woman's vagina showing. No, no, just I'll, stop it. Let's get on the numbers other will go stuff. Way up. Let's get on the other stuff. Okay. Oh, good. I, I have something to show you, Alex. This yeah. is to show you how much of a fan I have been of yours forever. Look, it's on my little toolbox here. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, those are our Live 105 uh, bumper stickers. There you go. Yeah. 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 In this toolbox. That way he doesn't yep. have to look at it very often. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's another thing that's been bothering me. The, the changeover on Live, on live 105. Have you heard, I, I the think, name change? Yeah, I. you know something? It doesn't bother me in the least. Everybody's writing me and going, isn't this horrible? Live 105 doesn't exist anymore. It hasn't existed for years, okay? There's been a station called Live 105, but it's not the old radio station that we used to do. You know, that was gone years ago. Um, I didn't even listen to it. After you left, Alex, I, I never even listened to it. Yeah, so, so, so they call it Dave now or something like that. So what? <laughs> You know, it's Steve, I think. Uh, they, no, I think it's Dave. And that's an old deal. You know, they would for a while their radio stations were naming themselves after legitimate names like Dave and Bill, and you know, uh, I think one of them was a uh, well uh, uh, in San Francisco, Alice. Yeah, I, I, well, I yeah. used to listen oh, yeah. to Alice. I liked Alice. Yeah, but, yeah, but there was another yeah. case of a name, uh, giving a station a name like that, you know. But yeah. um, you see, How long were you at Live 105, Alex? I, I was there for, I went, four years? Uh, oh, God, I think I started in about eight. I think maybe it was 10 years, maybe. I can't remember. Oh, was it that long? Yeah, yeah. he was there for a while. Quite a while. It was that the station that, that let you go, you went to Miami and you came back to? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's one. Yeah, there was that break there. But no, I was first I was at KML and then I was at the Quake and then uh, I went over to uh, Live 105, I think in maybe it was like 84, I can't remember now. And that's I, about right. Yeah. Cause I, I, I came to see you in the studio and you had Joey Ramone as yeah. a guest. Oh, yeah. I love and Joey. it was such a blast. It was it was the most fun as a stupid little suburban kid. I had nothing better to do yeah, at six in the morning. I'm telling you, <laughs> Joey was just. I love Joey. I mean, he was the best. He was yeah. just terrific. Uh, yeah, I thought the world of him. But uh, um, you know, I mean, um, uh, I was there for you know uh, on and off in that town for about twelve years, thirteen years. But I didn't I didn't last that long. Here's here's the thing that gets to me. I just was seeing that they just inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame in San Francisco, which I've been 
I was inducted years ago. Uh, Lamont and Tonelli. Now, Lamont and Tonelli were this team that were on in, in San Jose, yeah. right? And I got to say this, in all deference to Lamont and Tonelli, I'm sure they're very nice people. I've never met them before in my life, but they're the most mediocre morning show I ever heard in my life. <laughs> okay. They've been there for like 25 years. And I'm going, I ruled that town for crying out loud. And I only lasted in that town for maybe 12 years, 13 years. And I'm going, what did I do wrong? You know, I mean, how mediocre did I have to get to be able to stay there for 25 years and continually be employed? Um, so I wonder about things like that. And I'm sure a lot of people who are watching me right now are going, don't worry, Alex, you're mediocre enough. They j you just weren't that mediocre. You know? Your glasses reflect well. What are you lo looking at there, Ferguson, William? Oh, I was looking up Lamont and Tonelli. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. A name I haven't heard in a while. Yeah, they're over at the bone right now, I think. Where are the bone? The bone. <laughs> Case the bone. Oh, seven. that's been around for a long time, the bone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're like hard rock. Kind of and speaking of the bone, how's that guy doing putting on that con? No, uh, <laughs> you can't tell me that when they were sitting around trying to think of a name for a radio station, when they came out the bone, they thought that was the best fucking idea ever. You know, that kid probably belongs to the bone. Yeah, and uh, bone, uh, oh, and then there was KOME. Remember KOME? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, don't touch that dial. You've got cum on it. it, it or they used to call it the cum spot on the dial. Yeah. <laughs> and correct us. That's funny. Yeah. Growing up in the Bay Area, I remember all those yeah. things. And and that Dennis was erectus. that was that uh, was yeah. They they had a DJ named Dennis Erectus. I remember. When, I remember. Yeah. Oh, that's. Yeah, I remember right. when he got fired. I remember mm -hmm. that part. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that yeah. was hilarious. You say he went out with a bang. <laughs> yeah, well, I spent my life in that town having to compete with people like Dennis Erectus. You know, yeah. of course the guy's going to get publicity. He could be terrible. He could have no act at all. But the fact that he was called Dennis Erectus. That's funny. You know. Good name. Uh, so, I don't know. I, Everybody had a toss-up. Do I watch Dennis or listen to Dennis Erectus or Alex Bennett? Yeah, this is mediocre name, Alex yeah. Bennett. Well, if you like dick jokes, you went to Dennis Erectus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you yeah. liked a better class of dick jokes, you went to Alex Bennett. Yeah, yeah, no, we, we, we had a high class of uh, dick well, jokes. Well, you had, you had a lot of really high-end comedians on your show, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember you had I John Cleese on your show. Yep. yep. Yeah, I was there. I was there. Mm -hmm. I tried to get in. It's like... <laughs> he had one of the best lines that I've ever had anybody use on the show. And that was, as I get older, with the grave ever yawning. And I just thought that was so m amazingly comedically poetic. You know, the grave ever yawning. You know. uh, he's still alive, though. Still alive. Yes, he is. You know. Uh, but, uh, no, we... We went through most of the, you know, it's interesting. Somebody said to me, Mort Saul, you know, Mort Saul just died. Mm -hmm. uh, and right. when I was a kid, he was the comedian I listened to because, really? you know, he and Lenny Bruce. Yeah. Uh, and they were the two major comics. Le Lenny was what Lenny was. And, and uh, Mort was the political comic and a very good one for the time. He would come out every night with a, uh, the clubs with a newspaper under his arm, and the first part of his act was ad-libbing jokes from what he saw on the front page. Uh, and I really thought the world of him. I thought he was terrific, but I've never had him on my show. And all the time, I had all this, and he's from San Francisco. Wow. Okay, and I never had him on the show. Um, you ever try to contact him? No. No, uh, I uh, Bubbles, Larry Bubbles Brown, who does this show, um, uh, does d knew him quite well, and I asked him to to talk to him and see if we could if I could talk to him, but I, I never heard uh, back from Bubbles on that one. So you know, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I never never interviewed uh, Mort Saul, and I only did Robin Williams once. Really? Yeah, I mean, I probably hung out with Robin 
more often than he was ever on my show. You know, so you must have had a line around the building that when he was on your show. Huh? No, not really. I mean, he he it was a drop in. It was nobody knew he was coming. So. Oh yeah, yeah. But was then, he really famous when that happened? I, I yeah. Oh I've yeah. I've seen the pictures. Oh, absolutely. Of the studio while he was there, or oh, the video, or absolutely. audio, and I, or something. Oh, this is well after Mork and Mindy, so he he was like. Oh okay. And uh, you know who used to hang out in the audience at my shows, and uh, I didn't, I didn't put her on the air because I didn't think she was she could be funny. But I liked her. I took her out to lunch because she was starving, and that was Roseanne Barr. Oh, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And then she came back and did my show because she wanted to do it because she said you were really good to me when I was nothing. Then I figured now that I'm something, I'd like to return the favor. So, you know, I was very lucky that way. But, um, you know, almost everybody went through my doors. I mean, I find people remind me that, oh, yeah, who was it? Oh, yeah, I, I'm doing a show one day here in New York on Sir, Sirius XM, and I've got Lewis Black on. And Lewis says, you remember me, don't you? No. And I go, <laughs> what? He said, yeah, I did your show in San Francisco. I said, I don't remember. He said, you probably wouldn't. He said, I wasn't screaming in those days, and nobody paid attention to me. You know, uh, but he said, no, I did your show back then. He says, you were very respectful to me, and I really appreciated it. You know, I remember he had Iggy Pop on the second time after the first time you interviewed him, and when he was just grunting and burping, and oh, he's that like, was in I don't New York. Remember any of that? <laughs> no, that was in New York. Yeah, but then he came to San Francisco. Did he really? I see. These are things I don't remember. And he came on the show. And, he and, was like, and, he, and you were telling him this story. And he's like, I don't remember any of that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you probably didn't. No, because what, what happened was, is he, I had done him in New York years mm -hmm. earlier. And, oh, good, we're going to have Iggy Pop on. And I was like, you know, the youth guru and the... Uh, had on all the hip, really hip music artists and so on. And I'm going to have Iggy Pop on. And Iggy Pop comes in and I start interviewing him. And every answer to every question was a grunt. Mm -hmm. Just a grunt. Like, so, uh, are you enjoying New York? Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that really, I'm not kidding you. And finally, after 45 minutes of this, I finally, uh, it's starting it's starting to get really funny because he's not saying anything. He is just simply grunting every answer. And I said to him, pardon me, but do you do anything else but grunt? And he belched. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the end of the interview. Well, thank you very much, Iggy. It's been fun and wonderful having you here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I and guess then later, yeah. And then years later, he came into San Francisco and he talked to you, and he was like, "I don't remember that." I don't think he remembered all. anything mm. from that time in his life. No, no. <laughs> you know, I think he was pretty well, you know, out there in the world. Alex, wheels. did you get a lot of uh, comedians when you came into New York? Uh, the, it, actually, I didn't do a comedian thing here in New York. What happened was here in New York, the thing I pioneered was interviewing rock musicians. Nobody interviewed rock musicians till I started doing it. Mm. And uh, I did it with somebody. I can't remember who the first one was that I had on. I think it was Melanie. And somebody yeah. asked me if I, who mm. I knew who was at a record company, would I have Melanie on the show? I said, sure. And I went, gee, got any more rock artists we can have on? And before you knew it, they were starting pouring all these rock people through my show. And then all the, and what would happen is I would call up to a record company and say, hey, do you have any uh, musicians you'd like to have on my show? And they go, nobody wants to interview rock musicians. You know, and so <laughs> in do. the beginning, yeah, so in the beginning, it was, a, it was a learning process for these people. They didn't think that anybody would want to interview these these rock people. So then I started having them on, you know. Early on I had Elton John on, uh, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the big rock people from the day. So my thing was having political people on like Abby Hoffman, Jerry Rubin, Dave Dellinger, oh, people like that. Burner. And it was all counterculture stuff and musicians and, and rock people. 
And um, uh, so that, that and, and then when I came to San Francisco, the comedy thing developed, you know. Uh, and so we did that. But uh, it, what, what I did for, for comedians in San Francisco, I did for music in New York. So it was, yeah. I remember well, Abby well, Hoffman wrote a book called Steal This Book. So yeah. I did and I got caught. Yeah, well, he was very happy when people stole it. <laughs> I, uh, what, I were, what were you going to say? Matt, lo Matt looked like he was going to say something. Matt. Oh, I was going to say, what, what's Elton John like when he's not uh, in the spotlight? Well, this was so far back that, okay. I mean, this, oh, God, this was is when, his, when his first album. Yeah, it got all coked up, probably. No, when his first album was released in America on Dick James' music label. He, Dick James was a big music guy in England. And I had him on. And uh, I, I don't remember much about the interview. I mean, a lot of those interviews are all, you know, gone to the wind because I, I just never, I never saved them. I never thought about it, you know. Plus, in those days, when you, today, today when you save stuff, it's all on a file. This show tonight, tonight for the audio mm -hmm. is being recorded on a file. In those days, everything was recorded on tape. And the mm -hmm. reels were this big. Okay, mm -hmm. and it would take if I had a reel that big. Okay, you gotta go to I had to have, I, and I had a three-hour show. I had to have three of them that big. Take you two hours and, to find that spot. No, and then you had to find a place <laughs> to store them. So you didn't store them that often, you know, uh, be, yeah. because um, it was just too much to store. Then cassettes came along. They were a little less wieldy. And then CDs came along, and they were even less wieldy. And then finally, now everything I have, you know, I have on a hard drive here. You know, I have thousands of hours of shows that we've done here on the hard drives. So in those days, it was very hard to keep stuff. So when somebody comes to me and says, "I've I've got an interview, the interview you did with Elton John. I held a microphone up to my radio back and blah blah blah." I go, you know, and I found some amazing stuff that I did in the early years with Abby Hoffman, Gene Shepard, people like that, that I thought I had lost forever. But somebody out there, some kid like you, Matt, was sitting there with a microphone to the record. Or the, or the, you know what? I still yep. have the interview you did with Louis Farrakhan. I still have that, too. I have that yeah. right here, yeah. yeah. I had, yeah, I recorded that. That was a good interview, by the way. It was that a was... great interview. It was a great interview. The Jew yeah. interviews Louis Farrakhan. It yeah, was, it was an interesting idea. Very. Yeah, uh, and and uh, we got along well. We got along very well. It was a phone thing. Uh, yeah, but it was very good. And uh, he um, he answered. He didn't. He not only answered every question that I was asking. Okay, but he answered uh, every question. He offered answers to questions that I would have asked. You know, are you anti-Semitic? No, I'm not. You know, and then he he said he, when he's growing up, he was he was a violinist, and uh, you know, I, I can't remember who he said was his favorite violinist, but it was a Jew. And he said, I've never had anything against Jews. You know, so it was a good interview. I, I should put it up sometime, or play it here, just so people yeah. can hear it. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, hey, listen. Oh, oh, I just looked at the clock and. Hey, I want to thank you guys for calling. You know, uh, it's been really nice. Been a nice yeah. group of people, and I always uh, enjoy having you here, Matt. You're new, and thank of you. course, and, thank you, and, thank you. and we have a, actually a bunch of people here who don't normally call the show. We have uh, we have also William Ferguson, and uh, of course we have our old friend Jeff Stein, and uh, the um, uh, the wide screen that is Alan. Thank you, Alan. I appreciate it. And thank you so much for the hints on what to watch on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, everybody, why don't you wave goodbye and I'll wave goodbye as well. And uh, we'll uh, kind of call it a call it quits for tonight. Let me see here. Oh, there they go. Okay, bye. See you later, everybody. Okay, now I'm going to be a little bit out of sync for a little bit here until I get rid of them. <laughs> What it is, it's uh, for some reason cameras are fighting cameras in this studio, and we can't figure out why. Never have been able to figure it out. Anyway, listen, uh, that's it for tonight. Uh, we'll be here again tomorrow night. Uh, 
And uh, we're not next week. We're probably not going to be here except for Friday night uh, and the Monday show because we have this whole court thing going on. And I have to be there at 9.30 in the morning. And, well, anyway, we'll tell you about that tomorrow night. Anyway, that's it. I'm Alex Bennett. Uh, That's all she wrote. Jack Bishop is next. He's here with The Intersection. He takes your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. Uh, I'll be back here again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, get vaccinated, okay? If you haven't been, and if you don't get vaccinated, wear a goddamn mask. And if not, swab your nose. We'll talk to you later. Bye, everybody. Bye.